Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now after decades of being a haunter and a bit of a nudge from the community, I thought I would tackle building fake corn stalks. But in preparation for this build, I did a little research and stumbled across a video from YouTubers Beyond 1031, which may actually be the best video on the subject. But that said, I want to take what I learned from their video and see if I can improve upon it. So let's get to it. After watching the Beyond 1031 Ultimate Fake Cornstalk tutorial and taking some measurements from Mrs. Van Oak's vegetable garden, I had a pretty good idea of the order of operations and got down to cutting up some 16 gauge wire in a few different lengths. 25 inch, 20 inch, and 15 inch. These don't need to be exact lengths, you just want to be in the ballpark. These will be the spine of our corn leaves and allows for the shaping of each. Once I've got all my wire cut, I can grab some 3 inch masking tape to form the leaf part of the stalk. This is the first departure from Angie and Troy's method and was solely done to reduce the time spent making each leaf, especially if you're planning on making a bunch of these. I'll pull a length of tape and set my wire in the center and cut away the excess, leaving a bit of wire exposed at the end. I thought this would be a smarter move for attaching them, but in the end found that it wasn't. So do as I say and not as I do. Then I'll apply a second piece of tape to capture the wire between the two layers. This will make up our basic corn leaf shape. Next up is to shape the leaves. In almost every tutorial on fake corn stalks, I've seen the leaves cut at roughly a 45 degree angle on the end, but I found that real leaves are more spear shaped. So I drew myself a guide and cut off the excess masking tape to reveal the final shape. And after a quick edit, I've got all of my leaves assembled and cut to their final shape. Now I can get down to paint. I like the idea of having some color on these corn stalks, so I'll start with a bit of green acrylic paint and will apply a stripe down the center of each leaf with my airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, you could do this with a brush. Just make sure to feather out the edges to prevent any harsh lines. Once I've painted the top and bottom of each leaf, I'll switch to a beige color that's slightly darker than the color of the masking tape, and will darken the edges of each leaf. This will give them more contrast, which should help them look a bit more realistic. At this point, they were still looking a bit flat to me, so I grabbed some dark brown spray paint and dusted the leaves as well as gave them a bit of speckling by just barely pressing down on the cap of my spray paint can. This takes a little practice, but it's a super useful technique that can work on a variety of projects. With my leaves complete, I can switch my focus to the main stalk, and for that I'm using half-inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. But as with most PVC projects, I'm going to start by removing the writing with a bit of acetone just to make sure it can't be seen in our final corn stalk. Now that the writing is gone, I'll grab the masking tape once more and apply it to the pipe. This is a good opportunity to add a bit of texture, which isn't realistic at all, but when you're trying to fool the eye, it's important to take any opportunity to break up your shapes a bit more. With two pieces of tape applied to the pipe, I can set it aside and get to working on the tassel. I'll be using this leftover rope from the dynamite prop video I made a while back, since it's kind of got the look of a cornstalk tassel. Angie and Troy's video has a great method for this detail, but I was trying to stick to what I had on hand, so this'll have to do. To ensure that it won't continue to unravel, I'll add a zip tie and apply a bit of CA glue to the rope before trimming it down to length and inserting it into the top of the PVC pipe with a bit of hot glue. I could have sworn there was footage for this. No? Okay, carrying on. Now that the tassel has been set in place, I can start adding the leaves. So I grab a piece of masking tape and get to taping them on. I found that applying the tape at an angle made it less obvious looking because it followed the shape of the leaves. 
and you'll also want to make sure to rotate the pipe 45 degrees after each section's taped down, since cornstalk leaves grow in an alternating pattern. I'm spacing each set of leaves about 8 to 10 inches apart to give it a full but not too full appearance. This is completely up to you and how many leaves you want to make. For this single cornstalk, I made 16 leaves, so the choice is yours. Now for the fun part, shaping the leaves. This step is really important, since real cornstalk leaves are sort of wavy, and since you've got the wire down the center of each leaf, we might as well put it to good use. I found that a soft zigzag pattern looked the most like the corn we've got growing in our garden, so each leaf got a little primping, and then it was time to stand it up and see what I had. It definitely needed two more leaves at the top to make that transition from the tassel to the pipe a bit better looking, so I'll add those on. But overall, it's getting closer. The next step is to blend the stalk in with the leaves, so I grabbed my brown spray paint again and started to mist the unpainted areas. You'll want to go easy with the darker colors since it can get away from you pretty quickly, so start from a distance and just add it in light passes. Once I was happy with where that was at, I brought it back to my work table and hit it with a bit of the green acrylic paint from earlier to help tie it all together. And when I felt like it looked more uniform, it was time to call this cornstalk finished. If you get any kind of weather in October, you may want to apply a clear rubberized spray to all of your cornstalks, since masking tape isn't weatherproof. That way you can use them all for years to come. So there you have it. Some small but time-saving improvements, which if you're making a bunch of these can really start to add up. I'd like to give a special thank you to Troy and Angie from the Beyond 1031 YouTube channel for sharing their tutorial, and I'll leave a link to it down in the video description so you can go check it out right now. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.